Hello friends, welcome back to Rachel's Baking Corner. Today we will be making soft sugar cookie bars. So think of the old school cookies that you would get in elementary school that are the white vanilla cakey cookies that are like this thick with an equally thick amount of colored, usually pink frosting and big round sprinkles on top. And when you bite into them, they just melt into your mouth. I know I just triggered a memory for you in your childhood because if you're raised in America, you've had these cookies not once, not twice, but several million times in your childhood and they're still available today. Well, this is going to give us a homemade version, which is also gluten-free and dairy-free, which I won't be taking that approach because I feel like it. Um, and, and hopefully a really delicious substitution for those cookies. So we're gonna talk ingredients, order of operations, and we'll get bacon. Sound good? Good. So I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I don't like these cookies <laughs> from the store. I don't like them. I think they taste incredibly processed. They taste fake. They don't really remind me of a cookie. When I think of cookie, I think of crispy and soft and flavorful. And these just kind of are like vanilla flour just packed into your face. And I'm just kind of like, wah! And it just tastes like frosting. But they were nostalgic and delicious as a child. And I'm hoping maybe this is more of a mature palette approach to that cookie. And it's gonna be homemade. It's a homemade sugar cookie. You cannot fail. So, enough jib jab. Let's talk ingredients. So when it comes to the flour, recipe calls for one and a half cups of gluten-free flour. I'm just gonna go with one and a half cups of my traditional all-purpose flour. To be specific, I use King Arthur. According to the recipe, you would use a fourth to an eighth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum if it's not already included in your gluten-free flour. Obviously, I will be omitting that ingredient. I don't even have said ingredient because I'm using glutinous flour. Two thirds of a cup of sugar, one egg, half of a cup or one stick of butter, one teaspoon of vanilla and one teaspoon of almond extract, in this container here, I have half of a teaspoon of salt and a fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder. Now my ingredients over here are for my frosting. I really contemplated just buying a canister of frosting, but then I was like, I'm trying to elevate the kind of sugar cookie I didn't really like from childhood by making a homemade frosting. So let's do that. <laughs> We've got two cups of powdered sugar, another stick or half cup of butter, vanilla, I think it's like a teaspoon, half of a teaspoon of vanilla. However, you know me, I measure with my heart, not a spoon. I'm not dirtying a spoon for vanilla. And then I have some assorted sprinkles because I wanted to get that classic like childhood. It has the classic round sprinkles, but I just wanted that fun classic look. There's also some cute stars, some pearls, some sanding sugar. We'll be using that. When it comes to tools, I will be using my KitchenAid stand mixer. You don't need that. However, with cookie making, you will be creaming butter and sugar and inevitably making a dough, which that requires a lot of elbow grease. So I will be using my mixer. However, you could just use a hand mixer if you felt like it, just something that does a little more work for you. I will be using my paddle attachment for the cookie, whisk attachment for my frosting. Additionally, rubber spatula, whisk, and an eight by eight inch square pan that I have greased and lined with parchment paper for easy removal of the cookie bars. Um, I did check the recipe. This is the pan I'm supposed to be using. I even measured it with a ruler because I didn't want to mess it up this time like I did with the lemon bars. <laughs> so without further ado, we are going to do a basic cookie recipe. Cream the butter and sugar, add the dry ingredients, make a dough, put it in the pan, bake it. While it's baking and cooling, we'll make our frosting, get that chilling in the fridge, and then assemble, and then eat. Ha! And then hopefully be taken back to a nostalgic childhood, but with a little bit more finesse. Hi, I've been going on for a while. Let's make some cookies now. All right, let's get baking. I have my KitchenAid with my paddle attachment fitted. I have mine with my little silicone pad thing here because it makes for more even mixing. I have my stick of butter. Don't question why it's on my spatula. I didn't start recording without my mic plugged in or anything. No, of course not. <laughs> I'm going to put the whole stick of butter or a half cup of butter in my KitchenAid, lock it, and we're gonna start whipping that up. 
start on low, give it a second to kind of break up, up a little more, up a little more. We just want to whip a little bit of air into this, get the butter nice and creamed so there's no lumps and bumps and coconuts, you know. Up a little more. So my butter is nice and mixed, nice and creamed. We're gonna get our sugar and get it creaming. So now what we're gonna be doing is um, the sugar is gonna be slicing and cutting through the butter as it mixes, incorporating air while also kind of dissolving the sugar, making for this really beautiful creation, which is honestly like the best part of cookie dough munching. If you ever want to take a bite in between mixing, it's always best to do it after you've incorporated the sugar, butter, and vanilla. It's like the best part. I always use spatula or whatever that's just small because I'm a small person, but then every time I'm scraping, I get like knuckles deep in butter and it's very annoying and I do it every time. I have longer spatulas. I just always choose the sm smaller ones. I don't know why. And then I complain that I get butter all over me and it's like, I do this to myself. We're gonna cream this together for about a minute and a half just until it's light and fluffy. Recipe doesn't say how long. I've made enough cookies to know kind of what I'm looking for. You want it to be light and fluffy. You can decide what that looks like to you. We have achieved light and fluffy. Okay, so we'll just take this off to show you. Almost looks like ice cream. We are going to add our one egg. Boop. Room temperature is best. Close it, lock it, and mix. Just until it's well incorporated, it's gonna get even lighter and fluffier now, which is the best part of sugar cookies. I'm gonna pause. I need to scrape my sides down again. That's the only downfall with this paddle attachment is that it does kind of leave a, like a halo of whatever you're mixing along the top. But that's okay. As long as it all gets in there, it matters. I don't know why I just turned into a Southern woman, but I sure did. All right, we'll mix this for about a minute until light and fluffy. Want to get some air incorporated, you know. Real quick while that's happening, let's get our active ingredients, which is salt and baking powder, and our flour. We'll just give that a little whisk so that our active ingredients are equally, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Suspended in the flour. You would think I'd have a memory considering I say this in every video that requires active ingredients. Now it looks a little bit like custard versus ice cream. We are gonna include our extracts. This is vanilla and almond. I just turned it down while I incorporate that so it doesn't splash everywhere. We can bring it back up again. Get it nice and incorporated. Oh, it smells so good. We are going to add about a third to a half of our dry ingredients. Drop that back down. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you're gonna notice this little technique I'm gonna do that doesn't always help, but we're gonna do it. A little bit of on and off action, back and forth, just until the flour has kind of gotten covered in that butter so that it doesn't make a huge mess. I've noticed with this paddle attachment with the silicone on it, it does make a little bit more of a mess because it's really scraping that flour. But, that actually was very successful. Okay, just until incorporated. When you don't see any flour left, stop it, lift it. We'll just get the rest of this flour in there. Good. I'm gonna stop it, lift it up. We're gonna take the paddle attachment off. We'll take the bowl off and we'll hand mix the rest to make sure all the flour is incorporated, everything is off the bottom of the pan, but you haven't overmixed it with the mixer. All right, I have my pan. We are going to plop the dough in here. 
Again, my pan has been sprayed with cooking oil and lined with a piece of parchment paper at the bottom to avoid sticking. See what I mean? I have a KitchenAid brand heavy duty spatula. And I grab that flimsy little thing. What's wrong with me? This scrapes all of it in <laughs> one go. Why do I torture myself? So I'm just gonna use my spatula. This is a very, very sticky dough, which is kind of annoying. But we're just gonna do our best to press it into the pan. Okay, that'll have to do. Let's give it a taste, shall we? Because who doesn't like cookie dough? Mm. Yeah. Almond and sh vanilla. Can't go wrong. So, for the sake of not damaging my kitchen island or your ears, I'm going to pound this down a little bit. That worked very well. Okay, so 350 for 11 to 12 minutes until golden brown, just slightly golden brown. Then we'll pull it out to let it cool completely. Let's make some frosting. Yeah. While my cookie bars, well, my cookie pan <laughs> is baking, we are gonna assemble the frosting and get it nice and chilled before we frost it. I'm going to switch over to my whisk attachment. And again, start with your room temperature butter. I don't really feel like you need to follow a recipe for frosting. I feel like frosting is a measure with your heart kind of thing. Everyone likes their frosting a little different. I like a really buttery and rich frosting. Whereas a lot of recipes are like 90% powdered sugar, five to 10%, <laughs> wow, math, butter. I don't like that. I want to taste the rich butteriness. So we're going to start with what the recipe says and then I will make adjustments as I feel needed to make a good frosting. <laughs> I have followed frosting recipes multiple times and have been terribly let down, whether it's the stability of the frosting or the flavor. So I'm picky. That being said, let's whip our butter. We're going to immediately crank this up, get it moving. We just want to incorporate some air into this butter. Again, no lumps and bumps. Same thing. When it comes to frosting, you really want to whip some air into this. That's why the whisk attachment is a better option. And you want it to go for a little longer than when you were creaming the butter and sugar for your cookies. Frosting is air suspended in butter and sugar. That's what it is. So if you can get a nice fluff to begin with, then add your sugar, which is going to add more fluff as you whisk it you'll have a nice delectable frosting. All right, I let that go for about two minutes. Nice and fluffy, I can kind of show you. That's what we want. Let's start with about half of the powdered sugar. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I am dying inside right now because I hate powdered sugar. I love the way it tastes. I hate working with it, it makes me want to die. It's a mess and it's stressful. <laughs> so we're gonna lock it and we're gonna really do this slowly. The whisk has a tendency to not push up as much as the paddle attachment does. Cause it's, it's immediately creating divots for that powdered sugar to kind of hide into. Good. Kind of like with the flour, just until incorporated. Once you don't see any more powdered sugar, let's add the rest. And again. Now this recipe does say that you want to have some milk on standby to thin if it gets too thick. I don't like to touch that until the very end because you are adding liquid with the vanilla. Let's toss in our little splashy of vanilla. Boop. Mix them. We're gonna let this go for about 30 seconds to a minute. Oh, it looks fantastic. Let's slow it down for a second. Let's scrape the sides one more time. I would definitely not thin this. This is already pretty thin. It's holding its own though, so that's good. 
let's see the flavor real quick. It is very important that you taste test your frosting because again, everyone has different preferences with frosting. I'm very picky. That actually could use some more powdered sugar. Let's do that. See, this is why you taste test. I just need a titch more. Not a fourth of a cup, just a little spoon. Again, your powdered sugar ratio is going to add stability and flavor. So it's a, it's a little bit of a tightrope you're walking. That's why you taste along the way. It's an air in there. Oh, it looks so good. Okay, all right, all right. Before I get carried away, let's pull this out. Just give it a scrape. Beautiful. The cookies are done. Hold please. Back to frosting. Ooh, look at even the little dippies aren't moving. That's great. Let's taste it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Do, do people get this excited about frosting? Or is it just me? A frosting to show you. That is what I'm looking for. Hold its shape. This is some quality cinematography for you. <laughs> okay, so our cookie bars are done. We're gonna let the cookie cool. We're gonna let the frosting cool. Thanks, oven. We're gonna let the frosting get nice and chilled so that it's kind of like that thicker consistency that you remember from your childhood. And then, we will take it out of the pan, decorate, and then taste. Give me like, it's gonna be a millisecond for you, it's gonna be probably an hour for me. <laughs> Here's our cookie bar. The parchment paper did exactly its thing. It's nice and crisp. I flipped it over, so this is actually the bottom, and that's the top. But I wanted it to be a nice smooth surface to frost. So it has been like an hour and a half. Um, it didn't really take that long, I just had things to do. So our cookie has completely baked and cooled. It is one solid piece. It is still soft, as though I can like pick it up. It's still soft, nice and crisp on the edges. Um, I wanted to mention, I did add some food coloring to my frosting. I forgot to do that after I already turned the camera off, so it's fine. I just added a couple drops of purple because I figured those cookies are never just white vanilla frosting. They're always a pretty color. And I thought this purple would look pretty with the purple, pink, and white sprinkles. So, all we have left to do now that we have a nice cool cookie and our frosting's ready to go is to frost it, decorate it, cut it up, and try it. So, let's do that. I'm gonna just start off with one scoop of frosting and just kinda see where that gets us. It's nice and airy. Let's add a little more. We could do another scoop for sure. I am not looking for pristine or perfect. This is a homemade cookie after all. I'm looking for pretty, fluffy, and well spread out. We're gonna just cover this sucker in sprinkles anyway. It is moving quite a bit, which is annoying. <laughs> If you've seen any of my previous frosting decorating videos, you'll hear me say it then and I'll say it now. I could tinker with this forever because I'm a perfectionist. Eventually, you have to just kind of be like, all right, we're good. <laughs> Stop messing with it. It's literally frosting. Okay, stop. <laughs> Get it away. <laughs> all right. Options, man. I definitely want some of these purple stars. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a few in my hand and just sprinkle it on top. It helps if you get it on the cookie. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple purple stars. Then I have some pink, purple, and white circles. The very classic flat round circles from the actual cookies from the store. 
Let's go a little crazier with those. But again, let's get them on the cookie. That's priority number one. <laughs> okay, so then I'm gonna do some of these small white pearls just for a little bit of dimension because I have a problem. Let's do a close up before I cut into it. Yay! I hope the colors come through. <laughs> There's my cookie. All right, now you can see the colors a little better. We still have the white vanilla cookie. We got some violet frosting and some pretty colors. Got some stars. Oh yeah. Let's cut into this. Let's do this. Should I cut them into little bars or squares? Cut them into little bars. Okay. Nice and soft, very easy to cut. That sound was a sprinkle. <laughs> this would definitely be a good option instead of a birthday cake. So much easier. Our cookie bars are cut. Yay! The time has come. I'm gonna get close and we're gonna try one. Well, hello again. It's like I was just here a second ago. Cookie! Got a nice, soft interior. Pretty sprinkles on top. Yay! Okay. It smells like this gonna sound weird. It smells like Christmas. <laughs> you know, like Christmas sugar cookies? Yeah, it smells like that. Okay, let's give it a taste. Perfect texture. Mmm. I almost would let the frosting chill before you cut it. That might be easier. Let's see if you can see. The, I thought I did a pretty tall frosting to cookie ratio. You certainly could stack that frosting up. I have more frosting, so I might. I don't like an overly frosted cookie, so. This is good. This is soft, almondy, still has some crispness. Mm -hmm. Sprinkles are all crunchy. Mm. And I don't think the glutinous flour versus gluten-free flour was affected. I don't know what a gluten-free version is supposed to taste like. I love that there's gluten-free options available for something like this. This tastes a million times better than those childhood cookies, but I never loved them in the first place. But this tastes delicious. This is better than birthday cake. I would definitely do this over birthday cake. Um, I'm gonna have to get these out of my house like as soon as possible, because I will eat all of this. This is great. I keep hearkening to birthday cake because it's such a cakey texture. It's thicker than a classic cookie. It melts in your mouth still. It's rich. It tastes so good. Um, this definitely is like birthday cake, cake meets sugar cookie. And this is a great homage to those childhood cookies. So I love this recipe. Don't worry about the gluten-free or not. It works both ways. I highly suggest you make this. Highly suggest it. If it's a surprise, if it's for work. I made something kind of similar to this during Christmas time. I made a gingerbread cookie bars for a Christmas party. But gingerbread is more snap, snappy kind of crisp cookie. And it was a little softer. This is perfect. This is the kind of texture I want. I love this. I will definitely be making these again. It was incredibly easy, but I mean, what sugar cookie isn't? Other than rolling out the dough and cutting little shapes and trying to get them to bake properly. Oh, this is so, this, this. I almost dropped all of it. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> I have some cookies to eat. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe, comment down below if there's a recipe you'd like me to try. Um, check out my TikTok and my Instagram. It's Rachel's Baking Corner on both. I am slowly starting to develop a little bit of a 
place on TikTok. I'm still figuring it out. I feel like such a geezer when I'm on that app versus Instagram. But check it out. I post some behind the scenes content, uh, some side recipes, what I eat on like a regular Wednesday dinner, things like that. So check that out if you'd like. Again, I appreciate, appreciate you watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye.